Welcome to Talking Threads. My name is Kathleen Jans Kaprivnik, and I will be your host. In today's episode, our guest instructor, Lana Schneider, will demonstrate a hem stitching technique that is both functional and decorative. It is called Knitting on the Loom. Here you see the hem stitching technique being used to secure the ends of a rug. And here you see the hem stitching technique being used to define areas of pattern as well as offset the neckline. This is an introduction to a hem stitching technique that I learned from a class presented at Convergence San Jose in 1990 by Birgit Olson Barron, who has created a pamphlet that covers the same information in much more detail. Coming from a knitting machine background, uh, she developed this embellishment technique for a number of uses. I find it most beneficial in its capacity as a clean hem stitching technique, uh, and that's what I'm going to present today. Here is an example of decorative hem stitching. Lana added it to the neckline while the fabric was still on the loom. Definition of a hem stitch. You're going to be securing your woven fabric in order to prevent any changes in tension at the beginning and the ending of your project, even as you're taking it off the loom. This is just a good weaver's technique, and there are many ways to accomplish it. Um, if you go to any of the design books or the introductory to weaving books, you're going to find some hem stitching techniques. This is one that I find pretty interesting and a real good addition to any weaver's palette of, of activities. The, how it is different than many is you do not have to measure off the length of your warp so that it is long enough to go across the, the width of your weaving at the beginning of your work. You essentially weave two rows of weaving and this I figured was the more clear presentation for you to see that. This is just two weft shots in a weaverly situation. So let me show you how this technique works. You take a crochet hook and you go over from the selvage two warp ends or anything that works well that way. You catch your, your same weft yarn so that you have a loop on your crochet hook and then because we're starting we're going to catch that weft yarn one more time so that it loops through the loop that's there and you tighten this. So there is your beginning. From this point on your weft yarn is going to be held in your left hand your right hand is going to control the loops that are on the hook. You go back to those same two warp ends that you started with and you go from the unwoven above the two rows that are woven and you bring the hook back out again. And again you catch your, your weft yarn. You pull it back underneath everything, you take that yarn and you pull it through the loop. There is your total beginning of this process. It will show how it works more effectively with the next stitch that you make. Over two, which is just automatic for me, I'm, it depends upon what your project is, what feels right to you, but you're going to go underneath everything that is woven, which is two shots of weft, grab the working yarn, which is your weft yarn, you're going to be pulling that yarn through the loop that was still on your hook. You're going to tension it just enough so that it stays straight at the bottom. One more time, over two, under everything that is woven, catch the working yarn, bring it down and through the loop that is on your hook and straighten it out. Now you don't want to pull this too tight because it will make a, a kind of a pucker in your cloth. Okay, here's your yarn. There. Catch your yarn. Pull it through. 
Here it is one more time, and we've got the camera as close as we could possibly get it so that you can see close-up detail of what it is Lana is doing. You will continue in this manner and proceed all the way across the width of the warp. Now we are at the other selvage, and like everything else, the beginning and the ending, this is the ending that is different than what is the momentum that you can you create when you're working across. I happen to have three at the end right now, and that just does not matter. You're going to adjust the yarns you work with according to what your project is anyway. You start the same way. You take your, instead of going up, because there is no up here, you just take your crochet hook and you go to the edge of your weaving. You t catch that loop and you bring it through the loop that's on your hook. And you tension it as is needed. And it's fighting me right here. You're going to take whatever size uh, shuttle you have, a, a, a boat shuttle, a stick shuttle, whatever shuttle it is, and you're going to enlarge the loop that you were working with and put your shuttle through it. So there is the loop that we, w we created, and now I am pulling it under tension so that it is at the edge again. That is my hem stitch row, and I am ready. I'm going to do this, you know, a tapestry sort of a way, but you can tell it would be anything that we wanted to, to do. If you were working on a loom, you're going to pick up um, treadle one, for example. If you're working at a tapestry, you might be handpicking it, but you're just going to start weaving and you're ready to weave because the weft that you made your hem stitch out of is still attached to the work that you're dealing with here. So here is one woven row. And on you go from here. So here we are, having woven enough to say this is my end project and I have to hem stitch at the top again. Remembering that a hem stitch goes from unwoven warp into the part that is weaving means that my looping stitch has to end up here at the outside. And so the way the stitch is made reverses itself. I, here I am with my last shot. I'm going to bring it up a little bit so you can see. I'm dealing with the two weft shots here. I'm going to bring my crochet hook through the second and third warp end, collect that weft yarn, and bring a half loop onto my hook. And because this is the knotting area, I'm going to catch the yarn again, bring it through that loop, and tighten these guys up so that they make the edge of my selvage there. To secure it as a hem stitch, I'm going to go from between the same two warp ends underneath the weaving, which in this case I'm calling two wefts, catch my weft yarn again underneath everything and bring that loop through the loop that was left on the crochet hook. There is my first stitch. The rest of it is just automatic at this point. Over some warp ends, underneath 
some weft, catch the yarn, bring the loop through the yarn that was left on the hook, and tighten it till it is the right spacing for the weaving that I have made. Over two in this case, under two in this case, collect the yarn and bring that yarn through the loop that was on the hook and tighten it till it is the right distance and thickness and tension. Over two, under two, collect it through the hook or through the loop on the hook and tighten it up. So once once you have that beginning done, the rest of it pretty much makes good sense to it for you. Uh, and what you end up with then is those double loops, those things that look like knitting are at the top of your weave structure. Just like at the beginning, we're going to do it again so that you can see the beginning one more time since that is where all problems arrive. You know it's crochet because I can pull it out just that easily. I'm going to bring my crochet hook at the top before the, uh, where the weaving has completed itself going to catch the weft yarn onto my hook, going to do the same thing a second time, effectively making a crochet. Then going to go between the same two warp ends, underneath two wefts, pull that yarn through and secure that loop in a comfortable tension fashion. Over two, under two, Collect that yarn and bring it through. That my poetic. Over two, under two, collect that yarn and bring it through. All the way across. Just making sure that if you want anything to look consistent, you keep the, the tension on the uh, on pulling the loops um, consistent too, so that they, they look like they're the same width across. This is not the tightest hem stitch. This is a good hem stitch and very visual, but you think of it as a straight hem stitch because that's the whole purpose of that knitted, knitted look for you. So all the way across to the other end and then I'll show you how you finish. And again, because just because of the way I have this loom set up, I, I would have two and one left over, so I'm going to take all three of these as my over and under. And here, I'm going to, to go with my loop and my hook. I'm going to go to the edge of my selvage. I'm going to go underneath and back between the same two warp ends and bring that loop through. Take it through the loop that was on my loom or on my hook, and then I have something that looks like this. I'm going to pull, you can cut this off because you're at the end of your weaving or like we did at the beginning, you can take your shuttle and bring it through. But one way or the other, you're going to loop your weaving equipment through the loop, the last loop that you make. And then there you are. Your knitting on the loom from the bottom to the top is demonstrated on this loom. The real use of, that I make of knitting on the, the loom is hems that I'm going to make on clothing, on towels, and things like that. My fun one over here at this loom, and one that I'd like to demonstrate if you'd like to see another example of the setup for it, is with rugs. I thought it might help you envision where you can go with this if we gave you a real project um, to look at. And so here we are at my rugging project doing thicker yarns but the process is going to be precisely the same. I'm going to throw one whiff shot, two whiff shots, because it is my habit we're going to end up over on the right hand side again I'm not sure that this is a given for any specific purpose other than the fact that it's what I am used to. I give that idea to you to try and experiment on your own. 
I've turned the end in so that I have nobody hanging out at the edges. And the crochet hook has slightly changed. It's a little bit larger for the purposes in which we need. We go back to the same process. Now I have a floating selvage and I'm going, still going to try to go over two, let's just evaluate here, two or three. Let's go for three uh, dents in the reed and at the very beginning here because of the extra yarns we're just going to take this first little bundle differently. Again I'm going to go from the unwoven, which is right down by my separator stick, um, and then over to the selvage edge, collect the yarn, wrap the yarn again around my crochet hook and pull it tight so that I have a bundle woven. The loop stays on the hook, it goes back down again and underneath everything that is woven, collects more yarn from the weft yarn that is my working yarn, and loops into the hook, the loop that's on that hook. Over three. One, two, three. Down, underneath everything, collect the yarn, pull the yarn through, and then tension so that the loopy part, the part that looks like the knit stitch, is as even as I want it to be. You proceed in this manner across all the warp threads until you reach the other selvage edge. Okay, so there's the last normal stitch. And here we are at our selvage edge. I'm going to go down, over to the selvage edge, catch my yarn, and pull it through making it nice and straight tight, and then expanding this loop, this last loop, so that I can put the shuttle, in this case my stick shuttle, into it and pull everybody taut. My yarn's on the left. I'm ready to set up and weave using the same weft that I have been using for doing the hem stitch. Now if by any chance there is some inconsistencies in my line, the first beat or two of my uh, beater is going to make everybody a straight fill. And so I'm ready to go to, for the consistency that is there. So from that point on, it's just plain weaving, weaving the pattern. There you go. We would like to take this opportunity to thank Lana Schneider for demonstrating the hem stitching technique known as knitting on the loom. We would also like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Talking Threads.